We'll start in a few minutes, okay? Uh, can you guys see the screen? You should be able to, eh? So we're looking at openness in the goods market. So we, we, we said openness in the goods and financial market suggest we want to know how open the economy is. Right? The higher the imports and exports will suggest, suggest that the economy is very open to foreign trade. Now we know when we open up, up to this point, up to study unit four, we looked at the economy in a closed, we looked at uh, the South African economy in a closed economy. Right? We, we did not trade with the rest of the world, and therefore it was less complicated. Now we now open up the economy, and you'll find that it becomes a little bit more complicated than previously. When we talk about openness in the, in, in the factory market, we refer to the ability of firms to choose production of workers, ability of firms to, to choose production, and of workers to choose their own work. So in other words, firms can now choose to produce domestically, or they can choose to import goods. Workers can also decide to work domestically or work abroad. You now have a choice because we now have an open economy. Now, the choice between domestic and foreign goods, there are some influencing factors that will affect your choice as to whether you want to choose between domestic and or foreign goods. The first important factor that's going to influence your decision is the price of domestic goods relative to the foreign good. If the price of your domestic goods is lower than the price of your foreign goods, you'll be inclined to want, you'll want to purchase domestic goods. If the price of your foreign goods is cheaper than your domestic goods, you will be inclined to, 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 to purchase your goods from foreign markets. The other factor that's going to influence your choice is the nominal exchange rate, the domestic price level, and the foreign price level. So what is a nominal exchange rate? The nominal exchange rate we said is, is the rate of exchange of the value of one currency in terms of the value of another currency. For example, if we, if we compare the value of the rand against the dollar, and we know that to get a dollar worth of goods, it will cost you around 18 to 19 rands or 19 to 20 rands to get one dollar worth of goods. So that's the, your nominal exchange rate. Then you're going to look at the domestic price of goods. As I said, if your domestic price of goods are, are relatively cheaper, then you'll, you'll, you'll purchase domestically. You also look at the foreign price of goods. Remember, foreign price of goods is denoted as, y, as P star. Be careful of these symbols. P is domestic prices and P star is foreign prices. So if I had to mention in our discussion P star, then you know that price, these refer to prices that are foreign prices. So, so all of these all of these factors will will influence your choice between domestic and foreign goods. But let's, let's look at let's look at the first one, the nominal exchange rate. There are two ways that the nominal exchange rate can be can be defined: the price of foreign currency in terms of, of domestic currency. So what does this mean? Could somebody help us here? The price of foreign currency in terms of domestic currency. Is the price of the it's a foreign currency compared to a domestic currency. Right, so, so in other words, if, you, if you're looking at rand and rand and the American dollar, so you're looking at the yeah. price of the American dollar to the to the rand. So to give you an example, one dollar is equal to 19 rands or 19.5 rands. Right, so, you, so you're measuring the, the foreign currency to the domestic currency. And the other way around, where you, you're, you're measuring the price of the domestic currency in terms of the foreign account, then what is it? What is an appreciation in the nominal exchange rate? An appreciation. An appreciation in the nominal exchange rate would suggest that the price of the domestic currency in yes. terms of the foreign currency ha has increased. The price of the domestic currency in terms of the foreign currency has increased. So there's been an, an appreciation in the nominal exchange rate. Then a depreciation is obviously the, the opposite. What is a depreciation now? Depreciation is a domestic currency in terms of a foreign currency decreases. Yes. So a depreciation in the nominal exchange rate is when your domestic currency uh, decreases in relation to the foreign currency. Now we need to move now. We need to move from your nominal exchange rate because we know that nominal exchange rate is gives you an exchange rate uh, in nominal terms, you know, rands and cents. A more effective tool is your real exchange rate. Right, so, so the formula to, to calculate the real exchange rate is given to you here on the screen. 
your, your real exchange rate is equal to your nominal exchange rate times the price divided by P star will give you your real exchange rate. That way we move from the nominal to the real. And let's, let's look at the impact of the nominal exchange rate. Let's look at the impact of the nominal, nominal exchange rate. Assume the following. In year one, the GDP deflated for South Africa is 110. The GDP deflated for the USA is, uh, is 110. And the nominal exchange rate is one rand is equal to $0.2. First, could somebody tell me what is, it, what is the GDP deflator? What is a GDP deflator? It is a tool, a GDP deflator is a tool that is used to measure prices over time. Just remember this, the GDP deflator is a tool that is used to measure prices over a period of time for all goods and services. So, so in year one, the GDP deflator was 110, GDP deflator for USA is 110, your nominal exchange rate is one is to 0.2 dollars. So you want to calculate the real exchange rate. What's the formula? What's the formula to calculate the real exchange rate? Nominal exchange rate times your price divided by the current price. Remember that? There's the yes. formula here, right at the bottom. The real exchange rate is your nominal exchange rate E times your price, which is your domestic price, divided by your foreign price. So all we do now is substitute the figures in that formula. So what, what is your nominal exchange rate, guys? It's one run minus. Yeah, but yeah. One hundred zero point two dollars. You get zero point two dollars worth of goods. Okay, that's your exchange rate, and that is your nominal exchange rate. I will repeat myself. What what is the formula for real exchange rate? It is your nominal exchange rate E times the domestic price P divided by the foreign price. So your nominal exchange rate is zero point two zero times what's your what's your price? Domestic price is hundred and ten divided by your foreign price hundred and ten. And that will give you 0.2. Now, in year two, the GDP deflate is still 110. The GD, for South Africa, the GDP deflate for USA is still 110. But your nominal exchange rate now changes. Right? You, you're using the same RAND to get, get fewer dollars. So in other words, there's been a depreciation in, in the exchange rate. Isn't that so? For the one RAND, you're not getting 0.2 dollars anymore. You're getting 0.1 dollar. So the nominal exchange rate has depreciated. Do you understand that, guys? Because it's costing us the same amount of money to get only $0.1, yet in year one, we were able to get $0.2. So the value of our exchange rate has depreciated. So, so let's, let's do the, the calculation now. We know your, 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 your nominal exchange, your real exchange rate is equal to nominal exchange rate E, which is 0 0.10, 0 0.10 times Domestic prices, is, which is 110, divided by foreign prices is 110, is equal to 0 0.1. 110 on top will cancel off with 110 at the bottom, and you'll be left with 0 0.1 times 1, which is equal to 0 0.1. So if you compare year 1 to year 2, what, what, what can you say, guys? What has happened to the real exchange rate? I think year 1 exchange rate was a bit higher compared to year 2. So the real exchange rate was higher compared to year 2, so in other words, there is a real depreciation. There's been a real depreciation in the exchange rate from year one to year two. There has been a real depreciation right, in the exchange rate from year one to year two. So in other words, we're saying that the price, the relative price of our goods now compared to the USA goods has declined. Right, the price of our goods relative to the USA goods has declined. Let's look at another example now, right? Impact on the price level. Here we look at the impact on the of the nominal exchange rate. We kept the price levels constant, and we changed the nominal nominal exchange rate from 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. Let's now look at the impact of, on price levels now. The year one, the GDP deflator was 110. The nominal exchange rate is one is to 0 0.1. In other words, one rand you'll get for one rand you'll get 0 0.1 dollar worth of goods. To do that calculation, it's quite straightforward now. It's your nominal exchange rate, which is 0 0.10 0 times your GDP deflated for South Africa, 110 divided by GDP deflated for USA, 110. And that will give you 0 0.1 times one is well, you don't need to write the times one here, and that will give you 0 0.1 dollars. 0 0.1 dollars. Now, in year two, the GDP deflated for South Africa is now 120. Because we want to know what is the impact of, of the price level now. 
So the GDP for South Africa is now 120. The GDP for the USA is 110. The nominal exchange rate remains the same. For every rand you get 1.0.1 dollars. Now let's calculate the real exchange rate for year two. 0 0.1, that's your nominal exchange rate, times your price, domestic price, which is 120, divided by the foreign price, which is 110. So that is equal to 0 0.1, which is so 120 divided by 110 will give you 1.1. Will give you 1.1, which is equal to 0 0.11. So, so if you compare the real exchange rate for year one and year two, what what would what would you conclude, guys? The real exchange has increased. The real exchange has increased from 0 0.1 to 0 0.11. If your if your real exchange rate has increased, so, so what happens to the price of our goods? Uh, if, there's a, if, the, if there's an increase in the real exchange rate, that simply means that our, our prices, uh, domestic prices, compared to U.S. goods have increased. Prices have increased relative to the foreign good. A real appreciation occurs when your EP is greater than your foreign price. Is there any questions that you might have for me? Are you okay? No questions, I'm okay. Okay, let's do it. You have the real exchange rate. Given the following information, calculate the exchange rate, the real exchange rate, and comment on the change. Use the formula, use the formula for the real exchange rate for year one and year two, right? And and, and come up with the conclusion. We've done it, we've done it just now. I'll give you a few minutes for this. So for year one, you're gonna work out the real exchange rate using that formula. And year two, you do the same. And comment on the the change in the real exchange rate. Are you okay, guys? Can we, can we get a response now? Let's do year one. Year one is 0 0.2, 0 times 140 divided by 110. That will give you 0 0.2 times 1.27, which will give you 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Now do the same for, 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 for year two. What is the real exchange rate for year two? The answer is 0 0.27. Good. 0 0.27. So what 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 can you conclude from that? It was 0 0.25. The real exchange rate was 0 0.25 in year one, and it increased to 0 0.27 in year two. So what 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 conclusion can you arrive from that? It increased from 0 0.25 to 0 0.27. So there's been an an appreciation. There's been an appreciation, isn't that so? In the real exchange rate from 0 0.25 to 0 0.27. So that simply means the value of our domestic currency, the price of domestic goods are more expensive than your foreign goods. Although our price, although there's a decrease in your nominal exchange rate from 140 to 110 and from 180 to 120, your nominal rate exchange rate decreased from 0 0.2 to 0 0.18 from year one to year two. Even though the nominal, the nominal exchange rate decreased, we still have a real appreciation in the exchange rate. And that occurs as a result of the change in prices. This is due to the increase in the domestic price level relative to the foreign price level. You understand? Price level in year one was 140. Price level for USA was 110. In year two, 180 compared to 120. So although the normal exchange rate decreased from 0.2 to 0.18, there's been a real appreciation as we calculated from 0 0.25 to 0 0.27, and that occurred as a result of an increase in the domestic price level relative to the foreign price level. So we're giving a reason why that there's been a real appreciation, because real appreciation has occurred as a result of an increase in the domestic price level compared to the foreign price level. It was 140 to 110, it increased from 180 to 120. So it's the price change in the price level that has caused the an increase in the real exchange rate. Now let's look at Bartham theory. The openness in the financial markets refers to the ability of financial investors not only to choose between money and domestic financial assets, but also to include foreign assets in their portfolio and to speculate on movements in foreign interest rates versus domestic interest rates. When we talk about the openness of the financial markets, and it gives your financial investors the opportunity now to choose between domestic financial assets and foreign assets. 
and they will change their portfolio depending on the interest rates offered by domestic the, the domestic uh, interest rates and the foreign interest rates. So that will that will change their portfolio depending on the changing interest rates between foreign and domestic. Balance of payments is a national account. It's a national account that records all transactions between one country and the rest of the world. In the South African case, it, it, it is a national account that records all transactions between South Africa and the rest of the world. That will include your, 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 your current accounts, capital transfers, financial financial transfers, and so forth. Will be recorded in the balance of payments. So, so let's look at the let's make a distinction between the trade balance and the balance on the current account. The balance on the current account is one account in the BOP. Now, the difference between your merchandise exports and imports is your visible trade balance. The current, account, the current account balance equals the sum of visible and invisible trade balance, your net income, net transfers from the rest of the world. So these are accounts that you'll find in the BOP. So what is your current, your current account balances? Equal to the sum of your visible and invisible trade balance. In other words, your import and export of goods and the receipts and payments of services your net income and your net transfers from the rest of the world. Net transfers, what does it mean, your net transfers from the rest of the world? Net income and net transfers. If your exports is greater than the imports, what happens, guys? There's a greater inflow of capital, isn't that so? If you export more goods than you import, you have an inflow of, you have an inflow of foreign capital. Conversely, if your imports are greater than your exports, there's an, there's an outflow of capital. There's a leakage. If your exports are greater than your imports, there's an addition, addition to the economy. In other words, there's an inflow of capital, injection into the economy. We talk about the current, the current account balance equals to the sum of visible and invisible trade. In other words, your, your, your import and export of goods and your receipts and payments, receipts and payments. And we receive, what are service receipts? Anybody? What is the difference between service receipts and payments for services? If we receive services from foreign countries, we're going to pay for those receipts. And if we provide services to foreign countries, then the foreign countries will have to pay for those services that we provide. And that will give us your net transfers from the rest of the world. If, if your net transfers is, if your exports are greater than the imports, your, 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 your receipts are, are greater than your payments, you will have a net uh, transfer from the rest of the world. Your capital account balance is equal to the, your capital flows from the rest of the world minus your capital flows to the rest of the world. As you know, in any country, capital is flowing into the country and capital is flowing out of the country. If more capital comes into the country, more beneficial to the economy. When we have capital, your capital inflows are greater than your capital outflows. That it has a positive effect on the balance of payments, positive effect on the, on the economy, on the level of income and output and the economy in general. Right. The increase in exports, what, what will you do to your reserves? What will happen, guys? What happens if there's an increase in exports? What happens to the foreign reserves? They increase. Right. If there's an increase in imports, what happens? What happens here? Will the foreign reserves increase or decrease? Decrease. Decrease. Guys, if there's an increase in exports, it means there's a greater flow of, of capital into the country. Our foreign reserves will increase. If your imports increase, right, when we import goods, we've got to pay for those goods that are coming into the country. Right, so when we pay for them, there's an outflow of capital, there's an outflow of reserves. So therefore, there'll be a decrease in the foreign reserve. Okay, what about the third one? An increase in capital inflows. Increase. Increase the foreign reserves. A decrease in capital inflows. Decrease foreign decrease. reserves. Yes, decrease your reserves. An increase in your deficit in the current account. Increase in the deficit of the current account. What will that do? Decrease. Foreign decrease reserves. Your foreign exchange. Good. Foreign reserves. A decrease in the surplus in the foreign, on, the, on the foreign financial account, sorry. A decrease in the surplus on the financial account will do what? I think a decrease because the surplus has decreased. Yes, the decrease in your surplus on the financial account. Your financial account is decreasing. If that happens, then you're going to have a decrease in your foreign reserves. Another question here. Suppose you're a South African, you are South African and have 100,000 available, do not need. After doing some research on different financial investment opportunities, you ended up having to choose between buying uh, one-year South African bonds or one-year USA bonds. 
Given the following information, will you buy South African bonds or USA bonds? So just to understand the question, you have 100 rand available, right? 100,000 rand available, and you're not going to use this for transactions. You want to, you want to make a financial investment. You have a choice now. You can either invest in South African bonds, or you can invest in in one year USA bonds, one year South African bonds, or over a one year period in USA bonds. So given this information on the screen, which will you choose? Which will you choose? Will you choose to invest in one in a one year South African bond or in a one year USA bond? So the first thing you need to work out is what what return will you get from uh, your South African bond? So it's a hundred thousand, right? You have a hundred thousand rands available into one plus. What's your interest rate for South African bond? Eleven percent. So uh, if you convert that to a decimal, it will be 0 0.11. You convert the 11% to decimals, you get 0 0.11. So 100,000 into 1 plus 0 0.11 will give you 111,000. We'll give you 111,000 rands. So it's 100,000 rands into 1 plus 0 0.11 will give you 111,000. That's, so that's your return for your 100,000 rands in, in South African bonds. Then we look at the returns for the USA bonds. So the exchange rate that exists between South Africa and the USA bond is one rand is equal to zero point ten dollars. Isn't that so? Your current exchange rate is one rand equal to zero point one zero dollars. So 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 remember, if you want to invest in 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 in, in your foreign bond, you got to take into account the exchange rate to determine what the exact value of, of your return is going to be. You got to take into account the exchange rate. Investing in South Africa is quite simple. You take 100,000 rands into one, one plus 11 percent, which is 1.0.11, uh, will give you 111,000 rands. But to compare that with your foreign investment, you've got to take into account your exchange rate. So you get, it's a little more complicated. So your, your, your exchange rate is one rand is equal to 0 0.10. Given, it's given on the screen. So therefore, your investment in USA bonds in dollars is equal to 100,000 rands. It'll be 100,000 rands which we have to spend times the exchange rate, which is 0 0.10. If you multiply that, you'll get you'll get ten thousand dollars. You get ten thousand dollars. A hundred thousand times 0 0.10 will give you ten thousand dollars. Then we do what we need for the to calculate the South African uh, yield, the South African return. Ten thousand into one plus 0 0.025, because the interest rate for USA bond is 2.5%. 2.5%, you convert that into decimals. 10,000 into 1 plus 0 0.025. And that will give you $10,250. $10,250. Now you're going to convert that dollars back to South African rands to compare. Right? You, 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 so you're earning 111,000 rands and you're earning $10,250. dollars but to, to understand the comparison, you've got to con convert the dollars back to rands now. Confer converting the $10,250 back to rands, you have the exchange rate is now, expected exchange rate is now 1 is to 0 0.09. You asked me the question, why, why are we not using 0 0.10? Because in a year's time, your, ex your rate is going to be 0 0.9. So you're, going to take the, you're going to take the expected exchange rate, convert it back to rands, so it'll give you $10,250 divided by your expected exchange rate, which is 0 0.09, giving you 113.888. There's it, yeah. There's the calculation there, right? Okay, good night then. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Bye.